as part of a $20 million campaign aimed at focusing the national debate on the debt and the economy. Carl Rove's Crossroads, GPS Group, they launched a brand new TV and internet ad today slamming President Obama's spending policies and arguing our nation is, quote, near the breaking point. Let's take a look at this. America's economy is hanging by a thread under the weight of high unemployment, soaring gas prices, Medicare nearly bankrupt, reckless spending, a failed stimulus, and a $14 trillion debt, much of it owned by China. We are near the breaking point. Maybe we won't be crushed when our economy snaps, but someone will. It's time to take away President Obama's blank check. Now, is this not what the great debt debate really boils down to anyway? And since everything President Obama says these days is practically a campaign speech, what are the political implications for him come 2012? Joining me now with reaction, two GOP senators, South Dakota's John Thune and Alabama's Jeff Sessions. Gentlemen, welcome back. Good Thank evening, you. Sean. I appreciate it. All right, Senator Thune, uh, the Senate Democrats, your colleagues today, sent a letter to John Boehner, uh, who's been fighting his own caucus, fighting conservatives, to try, not, to, to try and make it that the country doesn't default after he passed the Ryan plan and cut cap and balance. Uh, the president still doesn't have a plan. Now that Harry Reid says dead on arrival, the president says he's veto, all 53 Democrats say no. Where do we go from here? <laughs> the president sure hasn't provided any leadership in this, Sean. Uh, and fortunately, John Boehner and the House Republicans are stepping up to the plate again. That's what we've seen that repeatedly. You mentioned it. You, they passed a budget. They passed it on time. They passed the cut, cap, and balance bill, sent it to the Senate. Senator Reid tabled it. We didn't even get a chance to debate it and get an up-and-down vote on it. And uh, so the, the House Republicans are once again assuming the responsibility for dealing with this crisis, dealing with this mess. And, uh, and I hope that the Senate Democrats uh, will, if the House Republicans figure out a way to pass this thing tomorrow, at least give it an opportunity to be heard in the uh, Senate. The I fact that 53 they... Democrats are already writing a letter against it and the president saying he's going to veto it is not, is not good for, uh, you know, for our prospects coming up with uh, next week being the deadline. You know, with Senator, Senator Sessions, with that said, um, and I had some issues, a lot of issues with John Boehner's plan. I don't, I don't trust the 12 members that are going to be appointed. I don't trust cuts coming later. And, and we had a very fruitful discussion about it on my radio show yesterday. Um, why should he waste any political capital when they have zero intention of even taking it seriously? I think his plan is to produce a trillion dollar cuts, which is about what Harry Reid has said he would accept, and send it over there. Uh, I can't imagine why these Democratic senators would uh, send a letter saying they want to, uh, would reject the, the uh, cuts over 10 years, which is a very modest cut. And remember, the House has already sent a budget that would have reduced spending by uh, uh, $6 trillion. So they would prefer to do that, but they're trying to yeah. put something forward to avoid a debt crisis. Well, where's and, the president and the in this? already being rejected by the Democrats, I think, is just unthinkable. It, well, so they did this to cut cap and balance. All right. I, I know we don't have a lot of time, and I'm going to bring up a fairly complicated issue. Uh, and I've had Rand Paul on, Connie Mack. Connie Mack's going to be on either tomorrow or Friday. Connie Mack has laid out a plan, because I, I like cut, cap, and balance. Both of you support cut, cap, and balance, but you didn't have a chance to, to vote on it. We are now, with our baseline budgeting, projected 7.5% increase pretty much as far as the eye can see, correct? Every year we're going to go up in increased spending about 7 8% a year. Is that right, Senator Thune? Well, I think in the entitlement programs, that probably is right, Sean. And that's why okay. we've got to get entitlement reform under, uh, undertaken. What about we have... The opportunity, we passed a bill that says we're going to live within the 2011 budget. Not, in, in other words, this year's budget, which is $1.65 trillion that we didn't even take in. And we're going to live within that budget for the next six years and decrease it every year just 1%. 1%. Can you not find a way to manage the deficit and the debt and get our country off risking its AAA bond rating that way? Absolutely we could do that. Uh, it would be reasonable. It would be the kind of steady step-by-step -step process that could lead us to a balanced budget. It won't be easy. 
that's more significant, uh, Sean, than it might appear, but it is doable, and that kind of thing, and that kind of thinking is exactly the way we need to be approaching yeah. this. The problem is our Senate colleagues and the President want to tax more and spend more, not less, and they're rejecting anything that you send toward them that actually reduces spending. It would change the debt course of America. Your reaction, Senator Thune, and, and how did we get this deep into the process five days out now as of tomorrow and the, and the Democrats haven't even presented a plan? Well, it starts with a budget, and the, the, the Senate Democrats haven't passed a budget since April 29th of 2009. It's been 819 days. Uh, that's why we're here, uh, and, and we've seen this incredible run-up in spending the last couple of years since this president took office. You talked a little bit about his economic record, and you look at the debt's gone up 35 percent, unemployment's up 18 percent, health care costs are up 19 percent, gas prices are up 100 percent. 84 percent his, increase in record. Obama discretionary spending since he's been president. Exactly, and that's, and that's what's got to stop, and that's what we are at least trying to get bent back down in the right direction. We're doing it against big odds because he's got the, the, the bully pulpit in the White House, the Senate's control, or the Democrats control the Senate, but the House Republicans are doing everything they can to steer this debate, and we want, in the, in the Senate, we want to be able to have an opportunity to join them, and we hope that, that we'll get that chance when the, yeah. uh, the Boehner plan comes our way. All right, gentlemen, senators, thank you both for being with us. Appreciate your time. Thanks, Sean. Thank you.